What is the spiritual life? This has been a question that I've been wrestling with for a long time. I've been on this spiritual journey for, first of all, all of my life in some ways, maybe unconsciously all of my life, but consciously maybe since I was 16. I think that's when I really started to ask myself some difficult questions about reality and my behavior and my relationship with God. And so at the time, the spiritual life for me was being as pure as I can be, <laughs> being as um, holy as I can be, being as rule following as I can be, because I believe that as I follow the rules, everything will fall into place and everything will work out the way that it needs to work out. And this worked for a little bit until it, did, it didn't, right? And I found gaps in that because I would follow all the rules and things will still happen that I didn't want to happen. So then I broke that apart and explored different answers to the question of what is the spiritual life and what's the purpose of the spiritual life. And I wrestled with that for a long time and I still wrestle with that. But today I have an answer that makes a lot of sense. And so right now in this moment, I believe the purpose of the spiritual life is to die to myself to die to myself until there's nothing left but God. Let me break this down for you. First of all, to die to myself is to die to my ego, to my will, to what I think should be happening in my life. And the thing is, there's life and there's reality. And then there's what I want to happen in life and reality. And there's so much out of my control that I want to control. And this is where my frustrations come because I want things to be different. I want people to be different. I want circumstances and experiences to be away from me. And I want certain circumstances and experiences to be all up on me and all up on my reality. But I'm so limited in what I can control. But I can have the ability. I do have the ability to surrender myself to life. I think this is what it means to die to myself, to die, to let my ego die, to let my will die so that God's will is just there. And when I say God's will, like I, I don't know what to think about God these days. Um, I have some thoughts, but I don't have conclusions. <laughs> uh, I know that God is present, but I don't know, you know what, what is God's and what is mine. Does that make sense? So what's helpful for me right now is to equate God with reality. So I know that reality, I know that life, you know, there's boundaries between what I am able to do and what life just does. And I, I'm, a, I'm equating that with God. So when I die to myself, I die to my, my strong grip on life. And I let life be. And I let God be. So to die to myself is to let go, let go so much and let go every day. I mean, this is an ongoing thing because there are things still holding on to me from the past that are keeping me from dying to myself. There are things that I'm thinking about in the future that are keeping me from dying to myself. And then of course there are things right now that are keeping me from dying to myself. So this is an ongoing thing and I won't know what I need to let go of tomorrow until I get there. And so it's an everyday thing. So. I die to myself so that I can be present to reality as it is, to God as God is, until there's nothing left but God. And maybe you want to define God by saying that God is love. I have to let go of myself to love. I have to let go of my ego to love. I have to let my ego die. Because when I let my ego die, I, I create space, enough space for my heart to be open. And my heart has to be open for me to give and receive love. I have to be able to loosen my grip on love. I have to loosen my grip on my ego. So the spiritual life is about dying to myself until there's nothing left of myself. And of course, as long as I exist, as long as I live, there's going to be parts of me. 
and right but i think the most beautiful things that are going to happen in my life is going to be when i'm like not even conscious of myself does that make sense you ever been in a conversation with somebody and the conversation is so good that you kind of lose yourself in the conversation like this is what i mean by until there's nothing left but god until you're in these these constant moments, these frequent moments of just losing yourself in what you're doing. So losing yourself in your work, losing yourself in conversations, losing yourself in service, losing yourself in just existence. You ever been at a grocery store? And um, maybe this hasn't happened to you, but this has happened to me. You're in line, you're waiting, and you, know, you have thoughts in your mind, so you're kind of just racing, and you don't recognize what's going on around you. Maybe someone says, hey, sir, sir, um, there's an open spot in line you you want to move ahead right because you're just so outside of yourself that you can't even pay attention to know that it's your spot in line or that maybe that's a bad example okay say you're driving you ever been driving and i've done this before i'm driving and i'm at the red light right i'm at the red light and it turns green i don't even recognize that it turned green because i'm so in my head because i'm i'm so in the way like my ego is so in the way that I can't even recognize that the light is green. I, this is what keeps us from living ourselves. I, I keep myself from living. So as I let go of myself, as I die to myself, I can notice when the light turns green. I can notice the needs of the people around me. I can notice how to listen to the people around me. I can notice things about my life that maybe I need to give attention to. So I do this and I let go 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 until there's nothing left but love, until there's nothing left but peace and joy and God and spirit and Christ. I think this is what the spiritual journey is about, at least as I understand it right now in this moment. And the scary thing about all of this is that you don't know we don't know where we're going. I don't know where I'm going. Like, especially when you, when you surrender and, but that's a beautiful thing too. It's a scary thing, but it's also a beautiful thing. It's a scary thing for my ego because my ego wants to know and my ego wants control, but it's a freeing thing for my spirit. It's a freeing thing for my existence as a whole, but my ego and my mind <laughs> is terrified of this. But nevertheless, I will push forward and letting myself go until there's nothing left but God. And you test me. Uh, go into some of Paul's letters. He said something like this. Uh, I forgot where it was, but something like you don't see you know, what you see in me is not me, but it's Christ living in me. Because I think Paul was good enough to let his ego go so much that only Christ was seen in him. And the same can be true for our journey through time as we let go, let go, let go, let go, let go, and let go every single day. Thank you for listening.